that's extremely important when you need to deal with meetings in a language that's not your first language in this case of course English はい、この動画は専門職バリンガル人材の転職支援をしているタリスマンが制作をしております、えー、マーケットの最新情報やキャリア、英語に関する情報を提供しておりますもしよろしければいいねをチャンネル登録もよろしくお願いします Today's theme is、uh, meetings in English Yeah, so we will be covering all the way from preparing for a meeting to going through the meeting itself, what happens after the meeting, and along the way, talking about some cultural differences that come up with meetings in global companies and particularly North American style meetings as well. Okay, Jonathan, so let's get started.、Uh, first of all,、uh, preparing for the meeting. Yes, that's extremely important. When you need to deal with meetings in a language that's not your first language, in this case, of course, English. One particular difference that is common between what happens in a lot of North American style meetings and perhaps traditional Japanese companies is that there is often not as much material sent out before the meeting. To the participants in a North American style meeting. There are exceptions to this, of course. Don't be afraid to ask for additional notes before the meeting if necessary. If they're truly an international company, I think they will understand the need that people who don't have English as their first language need. And I'm sure that in most cases, As long as the information isn't very confidential, they will understand that. Yeah, I agree.、Uh, preparation is very important. And speaking of preparation, there's also the agenda that comes up. Now, the agenda, again, in North American style meetings, it could be in some meetings, they'll have a breakdown of actual times or expected times for each item on the agenda. But in many, it may just be a simple list, a general list of what's going to be discussed with no time breakdowns. On top of that, of course, in addition to the agenda, there will be a breakdown of the, the roles, deciding who's going to be、uh, what we say now the chairperson or the chair or facilitator of the meeting. Chairman used to be the, the old term, but obviously, because of gender issues, it's now more neutral chair or chairperson or facilitator. And the, the minute taker is obviously important, an important role as well. One other cultural difference between traditional Japanese meetings and North American style meetings is the whole process of、uh, nemawashi. Right.、Mm-hmm. One thing that, speaking as a North American and what many North Americans find frustrating when they come to Japan and working in a more traditional Japanese company is the whole idea of we're used to thinking that the decisions are made in the meeting、mm-hmm. itself.、Um, whereas I understand in many traditional companies in Japan, there is the process. It's usually a lot of it is decided in smaller groups prior to the meeting. And the meeting itself is just for formalizing everything. My understanding is that it's a way of avoiding conflict. North American meetings, they're not so worried about conflict. So, in that case, it's okay and expected, depending on the situation, to have debate in the meeting itself, in front、yes. of, so disagreeing in front of, depending on the size of the meeting, quite large groups. You know, it, it happens and it's, it's a normal thing and it's not necessarily something to avoid. There may be more open conflict. It doesn't necessarily mean there will be screaming matches, but there will be more debates. This is something else to be prepared for and not to be intimidated by. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong or that the relationship will suffer. It's just that's part of how decisions are made. Yes. This is related to、um, high context and low context culture. So, Japanese, they are、uh, in high context. So, they are afraid sometimes about the conflict. But、uh, I guess in your culture, it's very、uh, common to like, debate and、uh, yes. often happen like conflict during the meeting. So, 
I think as a non native English speaker, it's very important to check attendees at the goal of each of them and find out possible conflict. Yes, that is a good idea. And that's actually some a kind of preparation that will also happen in North America. So that's quite natural if, if a Japanese person who is in this situation wants to find out more.、Um, there's nothing wrong with that, and it's a good idea. Jonathan, thank you for your explanation. I have a question. So,、yes. uh, what is the role for facilitator? Facilitator is another name for the chair or the chairperson.、Mm -hmm. They're not exactly in charge of the meeting because it's not as though they're the boss of the meeting, but their role is mainly to ensure that everything proceeds in an orderly manner. Generally, according to the amount of time that's necessary, they recognize when someone speaks. In in a smaller, less formal thing, they may not a less formal meeting. I should say, they may not have as much to do. But in more formal meetings, for example, annual general meetings for a company, they may have the whole procedure called Robert's Rules of Order. Is the very organized way of when details when people are allowed to speak,、uh, when they can disagree. How they can communicate with the other person so that it doesn't end up becoming just a very informal shouting match between two opposites. So there is still a level of respect, even though there's disagreement. If you really want to know about Robert's Rules of Order, there are some very large, very thick books on the topic. But those types of rules are usually more often in very traditional, very structured. Large-scale meetings, especially North American meetings, a little less formal. Usually, the chairperson just makes sure most of the time that the agenda is followed and that people are generally civilized. Okay, thank you. So, next topic is starting a meeting, right? Yes. So often, what happens in the case of a North American meeting, specifically, there is time for small talk.